Welcome back everybody or welcome if you are new back with another World of Outlaws Dirt Racing Career Mode episode. We are starting out in the 305 Sprint Cars for the first time ever. Uh, we had a little bit over 200,000, 230,000, something like that, but we are able to upgrade this car pretty well. We got level 4 tires, level 4 wings, uh, level 4 suspension, level 3 chassis, and level 3 engine. Honestly, I think we could win this championship in the first season. It depends on how I drive in these things. I haven't driven them yet at all. But I uh, got a little blue paint scheme here. I like it, and it's something simple. But uh, if we do win the championship in this first season, we're not going to be able to gain much money going into the regionals. So that'll be interesting to see what we could do. But this season, only 10 races. It is Millbridge, Sterling County, and the showcase at Kokomo for this first episode. Next episode will be Prairie View, Elm Creek, Lima Land, and the showcase at Fairbury. Kokomo, Fairbury, and Eldora to finish it out. So strong ending for us, which I really like. And then... Uh, the middle here is going to be interesting. Lima Land, Fairbury should be all right. Prairie View is going to be tough. Elm Creek's tough because it's so small. Kokomo for this showcase, I love. That's going to be very interesting. Sterling, we've been back and forth at. Usually better than worse. And then Millbridge has been really bad for me so far in the micros. That's the only time we've raced Millbridge. So going to be a tough little track for us, but we'll see how we can do here. All right, I was able to get down to an 8.3 here, but I think that's like a top 34 time or something like we are not super super fast at all But we'll see how it could go for us These things feel so weird compared to the midgets We were just driving because we I drove them for six seasons like it was a long time But these feel so different It's gonna be a little bit to get used to so we may struggle in this first season even with having a pretty good car 8.2 on the first lap that's better than what we had in practice by like a tenth so that's pretty solid and we'll see where that will put us at i think i had a 214 on the second lap still pretty solid top uh we were fourth in the first heat here but top 15 here for qualifying pretty good very happy about that top five make it straight to the main so as long as we don't wreck it early we should be all right we got ned hill inside of us Arnold in front of us, Kyle Arnold. Okay, I have to recognize, I have to figure out some of these guys' names and stuff because I don't know all of them, obviously. We've never raced the 305s yet. I just knew Ned Hill was the 86 because that's like his paint scheme in every series and stuff. I'm gonna try and slide up here in the third. Not gonna quite happen. These cars are so big for this track. I had to come to a dead stop there. My bad, everybody. I just, I just brought everybody to a dead stop there in the middle of the corner because this track is so tiny for these cars. This track is kind of ridiculous in these, honestly. I feel like they should have gone here in the midgets, but not the 305s. But, you know, we struggled enough in the midgets. I did not need this track as well. That made it so bad. I cannot see a thing with that billboard. Holy crap. Don't run too close to the wall in one and two. I'm going to try and slide them. That was actually a pretty good slider there. Get out of the wall, get down to the bottom, and we'll finish third. I'll take that. I'll move us up four spots. I think we'll start ninth. Right there? Yeah, starting ninth in the A-Main. That's pretty good. We have a pretty upgraded car, though, so I was hoping we could make some A-Mains pretty early and everything. So, it's a good thing we're starting top 10, because it is going to be a pain to try and pass here, I imagine. We'll see how it goes. I got the bottom berm already. And we'll see what we can do. Ned Hill right in front of us. Going to try and get in front of him there. Just let me scooch on by right here. Just trying to take it easy not get too much wheel-to-wheel -to -wheel contact because i don't know how crazy these things are yet with those with that we had a little bit of contact in the heat and it didn't kill us which was really nice so we'll try and uh just keep that on the wayside for now we don't have to worry about it we'll see if uh, the ai wreck with each other pretty bad or not we got robbie collins right in front of us very green and yellow paint scheme. We got Ricky Cox up here in front of us. I only recognize that because of the 105 on the side of his car. But he has just a plain black and then green scheme. But I'm really hoping we could try to catch him finishing that top five spot. Why does he have blue? Why does a lot of people have blue wheels out here? I put blue wheels on my car because I have a blue scheme. Half these guys don't have any blue in their car besides the, the rims. Like, what is that about? That's pretty funny, but we're catching his lap traffic. We got 16 laps to go. There is somebody up in the wall. We're not going to have to deal with lap traffic. That may or may not have been a lead lap car. I'm not sure at all, but Samantha Bell's out here. We recognize that name. Brian Ramirez, I recognize Cody Rodriguez. I don't really recognize Jeff Aviano. That's pretty cool. He's out here in the 305s. I know he's a YouTube guy and everything, so it's cool to see him in the game. I'm pretty sure he was in the uh, the first game as well last uh not, was it last year that it came out? It might have been two years ago. I don't honestly remember. 
but uh, he was in the uh, the last game as well. But I knew his uh, sponsor was still in the game, so I figured he was in here, but I didn't know what series. I thought maybe he'd be up in the regionals somewhere, like 360s or something like that, because I think he was in 360s and stuff like that last season. But kind of shocking to, for this to be the first time I've uh, seen him in the career. I thought it had been a different series. Definitely did not expect the 305s. Because a lot of the iRacing people from the last game, I don't know if they're even in this game or not, but there was a bunch of them in the 360s in the last game, which was pretty cool. Because I raced, oh, they're getting right weird. Cox just put them in the wall. Uh, I've raced with a ton of those guys that were in the iRacing, in the World of Outlaws game of the iRacing names that were in the Pro Series and stuff in the last game. So definitely, I probably raced most, if not all of them on iRacing. They're all super, super fast. They're the reason that they are pros on iRacing at one time or the other. But hope to see them in the game again, honestly. And somebody's in a dead stop in turn one. We're in fifth, so we're on the bottom. We're already at a top five spot, which is pretty solid. And hopefully we try to get by Cox up here for a top four, maybe. But running top five in our first race, especially Millbridge. I honestly was I couldn't have expected that. I would have uh, said, oh, you might not be top five. <laughs> I got right hooked immediately there. But I would have uh, not put this on my bingo card for this race. Especially like for the first race in the 305s. We'll see if we can try to get by Ricky Cox. I don't want to be too aggressive and completely ruin our day. But I really want to try and get in front of him just because like I like making fun of his name. And I can beat out Cox at this track. That'd be nice. We got one final lap. I'm up. I'm getting up on his wheels. Those don't lose the spot. They're hitting after the line. We're good. We got top five. Let's go. We tried to rough up Cox a little bit, didn't quite work for us, but we end up top five. I will take that. Jeff gets to win, Brian, Cody, and then Ricky round out the top four in front of us. So that was a great race for us. Let's see how much money that gets us without having a sponsor or anything. I'm honestly interested because we're going to be fifth in points, obviously, because it was first race of the season and our career in these things. But 3,900, that's literally it. We get hardly any merch sold because nobody knows us in this series yet. By the end of the year, we'll get be, we'll be paid pretty decent, I feel like, because if we start racking up good finishes very fast, we could get uh, pretty good payouts, I think. So hopefully uh, we can get that sponsor quick after Kokomo, and we'll see how we are sitting then. That'll get us over 31 and a half thousand. We had some moderate driving there. I was beating the car up in practice trying to figure it out. I was hitting the wall a bunch. That's probably where all that moderate driving came from, honestly. But uh, car doesn't need to be repaired. Perfect. We'll move on to Sterling County here. I just got to rip the bottom. Hopefully we can be good on restarts like we were previously. $8,000 to win. I'm going to up the laps here to 18. Oh, actually, it's going to go 80%. What is that going to make? Is that going to make it 21? If it's 21, that's all right. 20 laps, that's completely fine. I, they don't have a 70% in this game. I don't think they did in the last game either. So 20 laps here at Sterling. Let's get on to it. All right. It would have run a little bit over a second faster than the uh, practice time, but it's only a top 34 time, and we have a pretty good car. So top 34 times are no match for us right now, which is nice. But uh, I don't know what kind of sponsorship will be getting like goal wise after kokomo we'll see it might be like a top 10 goal with how well we're doing i'll have to see how we do here because millbridge could have just been an anomaly getting a top five right away we'll have to see 10 four right there just have to see how we do at this track and then also the showcase and then see where we are compared to the full-time guys after the showcase and that was a three on the second lap. 13th once again. We qualified 13th in the first race. Qualified 13th in the second race as well, which is really good because we usually pick up speed in the race anyways. And hopefully we can get a spot here in the heat race again. Starting ninth once again. That'd be nice. Looks like Jeff's on pole also. He is killing it right now. We had a good start, which is not necessarily the best because I wanted to be on the inside, especially in this three and four. I wanted to be on the inside. He goes way up top. Jeff went from first to fourth there. Good job. That guy, I think it was Tommy Bailey it was. Okay, Tommy Bailey's out here in the 305s as well. Went from second back to, like, fourth. Margie's out here also battling with Tommy behind us. We'll see if we can try to catch Cody Rodriguez or not. We're pulling away from Jeff a little bit, which is really nice. We can make it into the qualifying dash if we finish here, which would be really nice. We'll be starting that thing in fifth. 
which will be pretty solid. Have a good shot at starting in the top five, at least for the A main. This heat has so many laps because we're doing an 80% race, but at the same time, like this track for 15 laps goes by way too fast. I wanted 18, but there was no 70% uh, choice. So that's a little unfortunate. We'll see if we can catch Cody though. More laps might give us a little bit more opportunity to uh, get him. Who knows? And I remember from the micros, I don't know if they've ever updated it. Like the wing was really weird. Like it didn't quite work, I felt like, but I'm not really messing with it too much right now because the car feels completely fine. Cody's going to end up getting the heat win. He got slowed up by some lap cars there on the last lap, but I didn't want to hit him in that turn one right there. So backed off, start the qualifying dash in fifth, live for another day, and then uh, see what we can do here in the qualifying dash. Starting in fifth, or well, worst we could start is eighth. We qualified 13, so it's already a gain of five. So I'm really happy about that. We got Collins, Ned Hill. They were both pretty quick in these 305s, it looks like, because I think they were, like, top five with us at Millbridge for the most part. Oh, don't run into them. Dang it, that's going to hurt the car a little bit. At least it's just a qualifying dash. We got Brian Ramirez, Cody Rodriguez up front. That's going to mess me up so much, like, because I know it's an R, the last name, and I see one, I'm probably going to call the other one the other last name. Either I'm going to call Cody Ramirez or Brian Rodriguez, Rodriguez one or the other. It's going to happen in the season. Don't worry. Robbie Collins is all over me right now. We're sitting in third, which is a pretty good starting spot for us because I want to be on the inside for the start of the race for sure because of turn three. We could potentially go from third to first in the first lap, but they both go high. They are ripping up there, though. Ryan ripping the bottom, Cody ripping the top. Pretty cool to see the multi-lane. He's getting right up to him, and then uh, Cody pulls away on the exit. Got two laps left here. Oh, he flipped him. He gave him the right rear. He flipped him. We're going to be up in the second for sure because Cody is going to fall back for the last green wide checkered here. That's going to be wild. Brian just right rear the hell out of uh, Cody Rodriguez there. That was kind of rude, honestly. But Cody's going to be slow now. I'm, if Brian goes high in three and four, we could win this qualifying dash, honestly. He kind of got really far away, and he didn't run the top. Rip, rip to us. Ned Hill on our inside almost, off of three and four. Able to get that run. And he's going to hold the bottom, so we are going to start in second here for the feature race. We'll see if Cody can work his way back up and get his revenge on Brian in this race. He fell all the way to seventh out of that. That hurts. Second to seventh in a two-lap span is rough. When you don't have any control over that like he just got right reared and flipped like that was just rude didn't have a great start we get a good jump on the straightaway unfortunately i wanted to cut down behind brian but was not able to ned hill under us trying to see if we can get that run we do brian goes top if he stays top, we might be able to catch back up to him. No, he is ripping up there, and Ned Hill under us is absolutely ripping too. I'm going to have to concede that spot so we don't get right reared. He definitely right reared me a lot in the midgets here, so I got to be careful with him because Ned Hill was a dangerous one in the midgets with that right rear because they would get like that right there under that white line, and they would just push you straight up the track if you're not on that white line. Luckily, it didn't affect us really, but Cody on vengeance tour right now for this track trying to go and catch back up to brian potentially he's got to get around us first he fell off after that uh, right rear attempt and lappers up here wrecking they keep it going straight i got in the ned hill a little bit i think car is fine yeah we're 99 percent it is fine i thought that was going to end up bringing out a caution because i thought they were going to stay stopped but they did not that really messed up uh a little bit of rhythm and our speed on that straightaway because we had a good run on Ned because he was checking up for it and we ended up hitting the back of him unfortunately. Try to get around Williams there. Oh, somebody's backwards up here, so we're gonna have a restart. We're gonna be in third here. Cody Rodriguez in fourth. Samantha Bell rounding out the top five. Jeff's working his way back up. He is in sixth. I think he started ninth. I want to say because it, I think he was third in heat one because Cody and I were one two. And we'll see if we could try to get back inside of Hill here and get by him. And if we stay close enough to Brian here, and if he goes high in three and 
four, which he does. We're gonna take the lead. Let's go. We're gonna lead some laps in our second race. Huge for us. 10 laps to go. Samantha Bell followed us on through who started in fifth. She is trying so hard to get under us. She does get under us there. I can't really pinch her down. I'm just gonna get hit up the track. We get a great run on that exit. Let's go. She had to push down the uh, track to not slide up into us on the exit, and that was a real slow speed down the straightaway there. Cody Rodriguez up in the fifth. Brian, who went top, who was the leader, is nowhere in the top five now. Don't know where he went. That's unfortunate, but honestly, he right reared Cody so hard in that uh, qualifying dash. I, I hope he falls back, but he's back up to fourth now. Him and Cody are about to go at it again, but he's in the position to try to right rear him back once again. It'll be 2-0 at that point if it happens. But we have a second lead over Ned Hill, which is really nice. Catching some lap traffic here. Hoping we can get through these last five laps clean. Got Diaz, who I've had a problem with in the midget series when we were trying to lap him all the time. Oh boy, this is lap traffic. Chuck Diaz, move out of the way, man trying to get by him i was trying to go up the middle because he just wanted to run the bottom and i'm trying not to run him over but we're just gonna have to be a, and look he, he like breaks on the straightaway so he gets back under us like for what reason he has a vendetta against me or something ned hill would split him three wide at the very bottom there we got one lap to go and i got ned right on me cody half a second behind us oh ned's under us chop him down He's going to get the run on the exit. Oh, we got it. Let's go. Oh, I thought Ned was going to get that run on the exit there. That was huge. We get our win in our second ever race in the 305s. That was huge. I want to go and see that like last lap there because I absolutely had a massive run. He had a great run on us. Sometimes the camera angles are so weird. I can't do anything about it unless you like go back and get a new one or something. It's so weird. But the lap traffic made it very interesting. He got to our inside. I had to really pinch him down down here. So he didn't get a run on us. Luckily, he didn't send me. He easily could have. I thought he was going to get a run on the exit, but he kind of checked up a little bit, which was really nice for us. We got a little lucky there, but got a win in our second race. That is awesome. Not going to get paid too much. We're going to get the 8,000 for the win, which is really nice. We're first in the season standings too. two points over Cody and Brian and Jeff, who won week one where did jeff end up finishing in that sixth thing that's crazy that we're all two points apart but i have the lead but we get eight thousand and 120 for the merch sale i think that merch sale is going to go up very quick because we're doing very well so let's get on to this showcase race and see how we can do all right that'll get us almost a forty thousand dollars car still in good enough shape we'll, we will use it for this showcase the way it is now repair it after there we get our first win in the 305s that is awesome very lovely to see i wish they would have something different for a win and stuff like each series but we earned a race win at sterling county <laughs> we thanked our friends and family and the fans during the wild celebration i wonder what kind of celebration when we're relatively new unless people have been following like the other cars that we've been in i don't know because we don't have much merch sold so but people do not know us right now but 40 laps no thank you because this is up to like 80 percent. even 60 percent was 30 this would be 24, I think. I think 50% would be 24. Let's see. 25, that's fine. It's weird. The, the amount of laps in this series is weird, it seems like. So we'll do 25 laps here at Kokomo. There's not a 24 lap uh, option. I bet you if I go down the 40%, it'd be 20% or 20 laps. And I'm guessing 100% is 50 then. So we'll get on to Kokomo here and see if we can run with the big dogs in this series that will only come out for the showcase. All right, able to run a 10-3 here. I think the goal time is like a 54th or something, 51st. Yeah, it's real far back there. So we'll see what we can do here in the actual qualifying where we're going to stack up with the guys that race uh, the regional series and stuff. They only come down here for the showcase races. That was a terrible turn one entry, but that'll be all right. I was able to run multiple 10-3s as long as I stayed consistent with it. 10-4, not terrible, but I know our turn one was really bad. Almost smacked the rear end on the wall. Luckily, it's a sprint car, not very long. Still 10-4. That's 12th overall. Wow. That's actually pretty shocking. Oh, Samantha Bell's up here. All right, so are there not a lot? Okay, there's not a lot of uh, non-full-time drivers because it looks like Brian 
Everybody up to Brian, which is in seventh, is a full-time driver still. So not a whole lot like there was in the midgets. The midgets, it was like 15 to 17 cars were non-full-time guys. So that those races were much more important to make the feature on. This one, we made the feature already pretty much. I potentially could win this heat and start sixth in this qualifying dash because we made Swift go high in a turn one, jumping under them. But Kokomo has been one of our better tracks overall anyways, which has been always great to me. Oh, I think they actually fixed the uh, wing thing because I moved the back to negative one. It actually felt tighter right away. So that's actually quite interesting. Because I haven't ran a winged car in a long time. Like It's been a long, long time since I ran the micro sprints. Wow, Swift falling back all the way to fourth right now. They are really selling the bag right now. They're going to have to go through the B main if they stay all the way back there. That'd be crazy. A not full-time driver not making the feature from the heat race. One lap left here. Tommy Richardson trying to chase me down. I've been just kind of safe, not running too close to the tires. Just trying to stay bottom for the most part, but not yet too close to the tires to hit it. But we're going to start sixth here in the qualifying dash. Pretty good start for us there. Very happy about that. And hopefully we can gain some spots here. Start top five. I don't know any of these guys. Is the O2 Jacobs? I think I remember seeing a name Jacobs. No, it's Josh Jones. Okay, maybe I thought Jacobs because of Josh Jacobs in the NFL. Probably what I did in my head. But Josh Jones. We got Boyer. Andrew Boyer. I definitely remember that name from the last game, I feel like. And we're up to fifth for a restart. They already hit behind us and started wrecking. I'm assuming Josh Jones wrecked because he's nowhere in the top 10. We got Bolak in front of us. I really want to say something different, but it's Bolak. We got Boyer and Bolak in front of us. Two Bs. Let's see if we can get by these Bs. Because I got an A in my name and it's better than the Bs. Really ripped that inside. Oh my goodness, we're almost three wide for the lead there. Is that minimum? Minimum, 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 minimum. I think minimum. I really wanted to throw the slider there, but they are just getting that run off the top so well. Final lap here. Dylan Smith getting that run on the outside. We want to slide him, but he's going to get that run and he's going to finish third. We're going to get fourth, but hey, that's a great start for us right now. I think Brian Ramirez got fifth or, yeah, he got fifth. Yeah, I was going to say fifth or sixth right behind us. I saw him in the mirror when, uh, We've crossed the finish line right there. That's crazy. So this race means a good bit on points, but not as crazy as the like Mike or the min midgets that we just ran for six seasons because those showcase races were so difficult to, to do well in. Ramirez got under us and by us. I'm going to try and do the same thing back to him in three and four. Should be able to get by him in one and two here because one and two is a little bit better on the bottom than three and four is. And we'll see if we can try and hook the bottom and just try and catch uh, Minium up there. Brian Ramirez is going flipping. Oh boy, that's going to hurt him the points. He's going to basically finish dead last now in this race because he was the first one in the wreck. And it's early, really early. We can get a green flag run here and he's going to go a lap down. But very crazy turn of events there. He got right rear and went flying. We'll see if we can try to get on the inside of Minium because of the restarts like we did to Swift in our heat race, which we are able to do so. I got Kyle Arnold right behind me. I don't remember if he's a full-time driver or not, honestly. I don't, I don't know if he was. But hey, we're pulling away now. Minium got stuck behind Arnold. Getting by him now in three and four nice and easy because Arnold went high. Now, Minium is going to be catching us very quickly, most likely. This is going to be very interesting to see if we could hold off Cassandra. Oh, boy. I completely messed up that one and two. They are going to be, like, all the way on my ass now. Going into three and four, Cassandra was dominating this race until that caution came out. We were lucky for that caution. Bolak. Oh, okay. Cassandra's dead. Cassandra's uh, roof with the, the wing went head on into the the wall like wing straight to the wall this, she died she has a broken neck right there that's a rip restarted in ninth yeah she's gonna probably finish second to last if not dead last to uh, Ryan it depends on how damaged her car got compared to his I don't know but he's already back there so he's gonna be much more further back 
But Bullock just flipped her and she went straight into that wall. That was vicious looking in the mirror. I can only imagine that happening in real life. Like that would have like probably killed somebody. That was bad. That was real bad. But hopefully we can pull away now and try to win this thing. We're starting off this season hot. We have a good chance of winning this uh, championship it feels like. Because we're leading in the showcase race. Won our second race of the season. We were fifth at Millbridge, which is really good for us. Because Millbridge is a tough, tough track. So I will take it. Eldora may be a little tougher later in the year. Just because a uh, bigger track. We have a level 3 engine, which is not bad. And we have level 4 other parts. We may not be able to compete for the win there, though. I feel like it depends. It really depends. But that's going to be the one that we have the biggest struggle with, I want to say. But Bullock having a resurgence here after I smacked the wall a couple times. Try not to turn in too early. Our car is still 100%. We are good to go. Not too worried. Cassandra's now second to last. We're about to lap Brian up here. Brian's already off the pace compared to everybody else. And Cassandra is falling back from ninth. So honestly, Brian might be able to go past her if... Uh, this stays green. Brian, don't go block me. There's no reason for that. Bullock trying to get to my inside. Lap traffic's going to play a big part in these last seven laps here. We'll see what can happen. If they, if they run the bottom, it's going to be real tough, and we're going to lose some time to Bullock. Luckily, we're getting a little bit of distance here on Bullock, so I can try and maneuver traffic a little safer. And I don't have to just send it right away. Bolak, almost right rear in Cassandra for the second time this race. I wouldn't be shocked if Cassandra just goes and cuts down and straight lines him. That would be honestly pretty funny. Because his right rear like absolutely destroyed her completely. But we're getting up to Brooks now. Brooks has been running this low line. I think I can get lower though. Get a good exit here. Don't hit them. We got into them slightly. I feel like there's a little bit of a bubble there between us. Oh, Bullock's all on us. And he gets into the lap car. Brooks slows him up a little bit. I had a bad three and four. So I was worried about Bullock right on us. Two laps to go. Coming up to the white flag. No cautions, no cautions, please. We have a good little gap here. Half a second. Bullock having a good one and two. But it might be too little, too late. We are going to get two wins out of three in the seasons. Two wins in a row. That is massive for us in the points because who is the first full-time driver? Might be Arnold, might not be. Other than that, it's Ricky Cox back in eighth. That is massive for us in the points. I need to see if Arnold's a full-time driver or not because I honestly don't know if he is or not. But we're still first in the points. How much of a gap do we have now? Jeff... Kyle Arnold is a full-time driver. Okay. I thought I saw the name week one, but I couldn't quite remember. Jeff is in second. 20 points behind us, though. He got a win at uh, Millbridge. Where did he finish in this one? He finished ninth, so he was just behind Ricky. Ricky is all the way back in eighth. He must have had a terrible Sterling County. Brian all the way back to seventh from getting flipped, and uh, that was uh, rough for them. So we're going to get $10,000 payout for that. Merch sold, still not much, but we're going to get our first sponsor, and we'll get a good sponsor goal. Probably going to be like a top five sponsor goal I'm going to go for. That is a solid 50000 that we have in the bank. We're going to lose that because we need to repair the car right now. But that will be all right. And we're going on to Prairie View looking really good. We're getting Bob's Bergs on the car. Where is the sponsor going to land, though? I might have to go change it. Top five, 720 a race. That'd be real nice. All right, it looks fine there on the car. I thought it might be like further back, close to the, the number or something. I thought it might look weird. But uh, 2600 to uh, repair the car, not too shabby at all. And uh, we'll up these laps probably to 18, I would imagine. This would go to 60%, probably going to be on 18 laps because another one was 20. But yeah, this is going to be 18. Prairie View is going to go by very fast to 18 laps, but it is what it is. We, next episode, we got Prairie View, then Elm Creek, and then Lima Land. And Fairbury to end it off. And we didn't run Fairbury yet. No, we didn't run Fairbury yet. We ran Millbridge, Sterling, and then Kokomo. And then later in the season, we're going to have Kokomo again and Fairbury, not as showcases. 
so it might be a little easier on those races depending on how we do at the showcase at fairbury we should be able to win the other kokomo that would be really nice for us so hopefully you guys enjoyed the sprint card so far it might be a quick single season which we haven't done yet uh, throughout the career mode, but we had a lot of money left over from uh, doing the higher drivers from the past season before the midgets, because I wanted to get that money to go into the midgets, and then we just basically gained money through the midget series, which was really nice. So we able to upgrade this car a good bit. We'll, we'll be going into the regional series with a little bit of saved money. I don't know how much, because there's only seven races left in the season anyways. So I'm not sure what the first series will be in the uh, regionals anyways. Maybe like UMPs or big blocks, street stocks, something like that. I want to go back into like a, a car that we could hit in a little bit and uh, race something that we've already upgraded a little bit as well. See how we can compare it to the regional guys. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Appreciate you guys watching as always. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.